The primary flight controls are the ailerons, elevators, and rudder. Spoilers assist the ailerons in providing roll control and also operate as speed brakes. A variable pitch horizontal stabilizer assists the elevators in providing pitch control. High lift devices for takeoff and landing are the trailing edge flaps and the leading edge slats. The primary flight control positions may be viewed on the lower ICAST display when the status mode is selected. Press the status switch now. On the ground, a full-scale indication corresponds to the maximum deflection of the flight control. The flight controls are hydraulically powered. In addition, the flaps and slats can be operated electrically using the alternate flaps and slats drive system. There is no manual reversion on this airplane. Trim for pitch, roll, and yaw is accomplished by repositioning the control surfaces. There are six guarded flight control shutoff switches on the accessory panel. They are for maintenance ground use only and are left on for all flight operations. The tail switches control left, center, and right hydraulic systems power to the rudder and elevators. The wing switches control hydraulic system power to the spoilers and the ailerons. The off-light indicates a closed valve. Hydraulic power from that system is not available to the indicated flight controls. ICAS advisory messages indicate which valve is closed. If two or more valves are closed, the advisory message changes to flight control valves. If both engines fail in flight, a wind-driven hydraulic pump called the Ram Air Turbine or RAT automatically deploys into the airstream to provide flight control power. The Ram Air Turbine pump is part of the center hydraulic system. The guarded ram air turbine switch is on the overhead panel. The switch has a green pressure light and an amber unlocked light. During normal operation, these lights are extinguished. If the engines fail, the rat automatically deploys from its stowed position. An ICAS advisory message is displayed and the unlocked light illuminates. When the rat is producing hydraulic pressure, the pressure light illuminates. Adequate hydraulic power is provided for normal flight control operations. At airplane speeds above 130 knots, once extended, the rat can only be retracted on the ground. Hydraulic pressure is required to operate the elevators and trim the stabilizer. The control columns operate the hydraulic actuators which position the elevators. Each elevator is powered by the right, left, and center hydraulic systems. You can still operate the elevators if one or two hydraulic systems are lost. Elevator position can be observed on the ICAS status display. Push the status switch now. The indicator has two pointers which represent the right and left elevators. The pointers show movement and relative displacement from center. 
They should show approximately equal displacement. Observe elevator displacement by touching forward or aft on the control column. Touch the forward arrow when you are ready to go on. The control columns are connected so both columns move together. However, if one column jams, applying force to the other column can override the jam. Pitch control is then available using the free control column path. Now let's look at the stabilizer trim system. Pitch trim is provided by varying the horizontal stabilizer angle. You can use the electric trim switches or alternate trim switches to set stabilizer trim. The autopilot trims the stabilizer automatically. There are two stabilizer position indicators, one on each side of the control stand. The scale shows units of stabilizer trim. The white band shows the current stabilizer position. The green bands show the stabilizer trim range for takeoff. If the indicator is inoperative, an off flag appears at the bottom. If there is a malfunction in the stabilizer position indicator other than a loss of power, the white indicator band disappears. Two trim control modules position the stabilizer. The trim modules use hydraulically powered trim motors and brakes. If one trim module fails, the other trim module can position the stabilizer. Trim rate varies with airspeed. As airspeed increases, trim rate decreases. Let's look closer at trimming the airplane. Each control wheel has two split electric trim switches that control the hydraulic trim system. Both switches must be operated together to send an electric signal to the stabilizer trim control modules. When the switches are activated, hydraulic power from the left and center hydraulic systems release the hydraulic stabilizer brakes and operate hydraulic motors to trim the stabilizer. Now use the trim switches to set trim to the maximum nose-up takeoff trim position. Another way to set trim is to use the alternate stabilizer trim switches on the forward control stand. The switches are spring-loaded to neutral. Operating both switches together sends electrical signals to the trim control modules. Set trim to 5 and 1 half units. Now let's look at how the autopilot trims the stabilizer. Autopilot trim uses only one trim control module, therefore trims at one half the rate of electric or manual trim. The left autopilot uses the left module, and the right autopilot uses the right module. The center autopilot normally uses the left module but automatically switches to the right module if the left module fails.
when a single autopilot is engaged, using the electric trim switches disengages the autopilot. Touch the electric trim switches. During auto land or go around with multiple autopilots engaged, the electric trim switches are inhibited. Moving the alternate stabilizer trim switches overrides any number of engaged autopilots as well as the electric trim switches. Touch the trim switches now. You'll always see this ICAS message when using the alternate stabilizer trim switches to override the autopilot. Any control column input opposing the direction of stabilizer trim inhibits autopilot and electric trim switch signals to the stabilizer. Next, we'll cover the pitch enhancement system, the stabilizer trim control backup system for hydraulic power. If both left and center hydraulic systems are lost in flight, the pitch enhancement system, or PES, is automatically activated when the control column trim switches are used. When this happens, a hydraulic motor powered by the right hydraulic system drives a pump which uses trapped left hydraulic system fluid to operate the stabilizer. When the PES is activated, only the control column trim switches provide trim. Alternate and automatic trim are inoperative. Full trim is available, but trim is one-fourth the normal rate. Now we'll go over the ICAS messages related to pitch control non-normals. There are three related messages. Stabilizer, unscheduled stabilizer trim, and stabilizer trim. The warning siren sounds when the stabilizer warning message is displayed. The warning light illuminates. This message indicates the stabilizer is not in the green band range for takeoff. Immediate action is required. When the unscheduled stabilizer trim caution message and light are displayed, the caution oral sounds. There are two types of unscheduled trim. The first is when the stabilizer moves without receiving a trim signal. The second is when the direction of stabilizer movement is opposite the direction signaled. The stabilizer trim advisory message indicates a stabilizer trim fault exists. This message appears when a brake fails to release or a motor fails to operate during electric trim. If only one trim control module is affected, full stabilizer trim is still available, but at one half the normal rate. If both stabilizer trim control modules fail, no stabilizer trim is available. If the fault is unique to the electric trim switches, full trim may be regained by using the alternate trim switches. There are two guarded stabilizer trim cutout switches on the control stand. These switches control hydraulic power for stabilizer trim. Each switch has two positions, normal and cutout. The switches are guarded to normal. When a switch is in the normal position, it keeps the hydraulic supply shutoff valve open. When a switch is in the cutout position, the shutoff valve is closed. This prevents hydraulic power from releasing the brake and operating the motor. 
If you have one switch in the cutout position and one in the normal position, only one trim control module operates. Trim is at one half the normal rate, but full stabilizer trim is available. The rudder provides yaw control through the rudder pedals. The rudder trim system the rudder ratio system, and the left and right yaw damper systems. Hydraulic pressure is required to operate and trim the rudder. The rudder pedals control three hydraulic actuators which move the rudder. Each actuator is independently powered by one of the three hydraulic systems. If one or two hydraulic systems are lost, rudder control will still be available, but rudder displacement will be limited. Rudder position can be observed on the status page. Display the status page by pushing the status switch. The pointer shows movement and relative displacement from center. The rudder trim control and indicator are located on the aft electronics panel. When trim is set, an electric motor signals the rudder actuators to reposition the rudder. The rudder pedals will also reposition. The rudder trim indicator shows units of rudder trim. The rotary control knob has nose left and nose right positions. Normal takeoff setting is rudder trim at zero units. Now touch the selector to set the rudder trim left five units. The selector returns to the neutral position when released. Now let's examine the rudder ratio. The rudder ratio changer receives airspeed information. It uses the airspeed information to vary the amount of rudder displacement, providing structural protection for the rudder. At low speeds, full rudder displacement is available. At high speeds, rudder displacement is reduced by the rudder ratio changer. The rudder ratio changer provides inputs to the rudder ratio actuator. The actuator modifies rudder pedal and rudder trim inputs to the rudder. The rudder ratio changer and actuator are powered by the left hydraulic system. The rudder ratio ICAS advisory message appears when there is a fault with the rudder ratio changer or loss of left hydraulic system pressure. The rudder ratio light on the overhead panel also illuminates. This message indicates that the control inputs to the rudder are not being correctly modified. With a rudder ratio changer fault, the left hydraulic system rudder actuator automatically depressurizes to provide structural protection for the rudder. If left hydraulic system pressure is normal when there is a failure of the rudder ratio changer, there could be limited displacement of the rudder at low airspeed. If this happens, observe the 15 knot crosswind limit and do not attempt an auto landing. Since full rudder displacement may be available, avoid abrupt pedal inputs above 160 knots. Independent left and right yaw damper systems are powered from the center and left hydraulic systems. The yaw damper systems operate continuously in flight to maintain the airplane's directional stability and turn coordination.
Each system has a yaw damper controller, which uses inputs from the IRS, the inertial reference system. The controllers operate hydraulically powered yaw damper actuators. These actuators operate along with the rudder pedals to control the rudder actuators. The yaw damper controllers do not provide feedback to the rudder pedals. Left and right yaw damper switches are located on the overhead panel. Each switch has an on indicator and an in op light. When the inertial reference system is not aligned, these lights are illuminated. When IRS alignment is completed, these lights extinguish, indicating that the yaw damper systems are operative. After IRS alignment, ICAST messages and in up lights indicate a fault in the yaw damper system or a pressure loss to the yaw damper actuators. If a fault is detected in the yaw damper controller, the corresponding actuator automatically depressurizes. Failure of one yaw damper reduces the total yaw damping authority by one half. Hydraulically powered ailerons and spoilers provide roll control. Through the control wheels and the aileron trim system. The spoiler panels also operate as in flight and ground speed brakes through the speed brake lever. The control wheel operates an inboard and outboard aileron on each wing. Touch the right control wheel. Rotating either control wheel moves cables that operate the aileron hydraulic actuators. Two actuators move each aileron. Note that all three hydraulic systems power the ailerons. If one or two systems are lost, you still have aileron control. Separate pointers show movement for each aileron and relative displacement from center. The inboard ailerons droop in conjunction with flap extension. Select flaps 20 with the flap lever. The six spoiler panels on each wing assist the ailerons in providing roll control. Each spoiler panel uses power from one of the three hydraulic systems. If a hydraulic system is lost, you cannot operate its corresponding spoiler panels. Now touch the right control wheel. Rotating the control wheel to the right sends signals to the spoiler control modules to position the spoiler panels for a right turn. The spoiler control modules then signal their related right spoiler panel actuators to operate. At cruise speeds, two spoilers on each wing are inhibited from responding to control wheel commands. This prevents over-controlling. Touch the control wheel right or left to observe aileron displacement or The control wheels are linked so that if one control wheel jams, it will disconnect when additional force is applied to both wheels. The freed control wheel can then be used to control the airplane. Next, we'll look at the aileron trim system. Two aileron trim switches are on the aft electronics panel next to the rudder trim selector. 
An aileron trim indicator on the top of each control column shows the amount of left or right trim units. Touch the trim switches to set the aileron trim right one unit. Moving both switches together in the same direction commands a trim change. It is necessary to have at least one of the aileron hydraulic power sources available in order to set the aileron trim. In addition to assisting the ailerons in roll control, the spoiler panels also serve as in-flight and ground speed brakes. The speed brake lever on the control stand has three main positions, down, armed, and up. Touch the lever to move it to the up position. Moving the speed brake lever provides a signal to move the spoilers. In flight, when the speed brake lever is in the up position, spoiler panels extend. To avoid buffeting, use of speed brakes with flaps greater than 5 should be avoided. Before landing, moving the speed brake lever to armed signals all 12 spoiler panels to extend automatically after landing. Arm the speed brake lever now by touching it. With the speed brake lever armed, three conditions must be satisfied for automatic speed brake extension. These are both thrust levers at idle, landing gear not tilted, and landing gear fully on the ground. Now touch the thrust levers to move them to idle. When all three conditions are met, the speed brake lever moves to the up position and the spoiler panels extend to their full up position. If you land with the speed brake lever in the down position, and these three conditions are met, the spoiler panels automatically extend when you apply reverse thrust on either engine. When all conditions are met, the speed brake lever automatically moves from down to up. Certain conditions cause the speed brakes to automatically retract. Anytime one of these two conditions which extended the ground speed brakes is no longer met, the speed brake lever automatically moves to the down position and the spoiler panels retract. Touch the thrust levers to increase power. The speed brake lever moves to the down position. During a bounce, when this condition is no longer met, the speed brake lever automatically moves from up to the down position and the spoiler panels retract. When the airplane is once again on the ground, the speed brakes will not automatically move to the up position. Manually move the handle to the up position to extend the speed brakes. The speed brakes will also extend if reverse thrust is selected. The last part of this lesson looks at the ICAS alert messages. The spoiler's warning message and lights indicate the spoiler panels are not in the down position for takeoff. This requires immediate action. Move the speed brake lever to the down position now. The speed brake is now in the correct position for takeoff. If the speed brake lever is moved past armed, the speed brake's extension caution message indicates that Either the radio altitude is below 800 feet or the flaps are extended to their landing configuration. Now move the speed brake lever 
to armed. The speed brake lever is now in the armed position. The spoiler's advisory message and light indicate that one or more spoiler pairs have failed to operate as signaled. A spoiler fault reduces spoiler capability for roll and speed control. The automatic speed brake system remains operative, but with reduced capability. The aileron lockout advisory message and the aileron lock light indicate a fault in the aileron lockout system. If the message appears at cruise speeds, it may indicate that one or both outboard ailerons failed to lock out. If the message appears at approach speeds, it may indicate that one or both outboard ailerons failed to unlock. The auto speed brake advisory message and light indicate a fault in the automatic speed brake system. In flight, if the speed brake lever is in the armed position, a fault may cause inadvertent speed brake extension. On the ground, the fault may result in the loss of automatic speed brake extension. In this lesson, we learn how to operate the trailing edge flaps and leading edge slats. We'll cover normal operation using the flap lever and non-normal operation using the alternate flap and slat drive system. Normal operation requires hydraulic power. Alternate operation uses electric motors to operate the flaps and slats. The flap lever on the control stand controls the position of the flaps and slats. The flap lever has seven detent positions. The gates at 1 and 20 prevent inadvertent movement through these positions. The position 1 gate prevents inadvertent retraction of the slats. The position 20 gate prevents inadvertent retraction of the flaps past the go-around position. The flap position indicator is on the center forward panel. The indicator has pointers marked with L and R for left and right wing flaps and slats. The right pointer is normally hidden from view by the left pointer. The maximum flap extension airspeed limits are identified next to their related flap positions. Now let's look at normal flap and slat operation. Moving the flap lever sends a signal to the three power drive units which move the flaps and slats to the selected position. The center hydraulic system supplies power to the power drive units. This power drive unit operates two inboard slats, which are mechanically linked together. This power drive unit operates 10 outboard slats. They are also mechanically linked together. And this power drive unit operates all four trailing edge flaps. All trailing edge flap sections, inboard and outboard, are mechanically linked together. With the flap lever in the zero detent, all the flaps and slats are retracted. Moving the lever to position one signals the slats to extend to the takeoff position. The flaps remain retracted. Now, touch the flap lever to move to position one.
The indicator pointers move midway between up and one when the slats are in transit. The indicator pointers move to the one position when all slats are in the takeoff position. Positions 5, 15, and 20 signal the flaps to extend to the selected position. The slats remain in the takeoff position. Also, the inboard ailerons droop in conjunction with flap extension. Now, move the flap lever to position 15. These positions are used for landing. Positions 25 and 30 extend the flaps to the selected setting. The slats are signaled to extend to their landing position. Now move the flap lever to position 25. For all positions greater than 1, note that the position indicator provides only flap position indications. Slat position is indicated only for position 1. Flap maneuver speeds are based on VREF for flaps 30. This table represents the maneuvering speeds for each flap position. These speeds allow for 25 degrees angle of bank with a 15 degree overshoot before the onset of buffet. Do not extend flaps and slats above 20,000 feet. The flap load relief system is armed when you select flap positions 25 or 30. This system activates if the flap's 25 or 30 speed is exceeded. The flap load relief system automatically retracts the flaps to position 20 or prevents flap extension to position 25 or 30. The flap position indicator shows this movement, but the flap lever does not move. The slats remain in the landing configuration. When the flap limit speed is no longer exceeded, the flaps return to the position selected on the flap lever. Next, we'll cover the alternate flap and slat drive system. The alternate flap drive controls are on the center forward panel. In non-normal conditions, you can use the alternate flap and slat drive system to position the flaps and slats. During alternate flap and slat operations, the power drive units are driven by electric motors rather than hydraulic power. The alternate flap controls override flap lever control inputs. Extension of the flaps and slats from up to position 20 using the alternate system requires approximately 3 minutes. There are two alternate flap switches which arm the appropriate system. One switch arms the leading edge slats. And one switch arms the trailing edge flaps. When the switches are blank, the alternate flap system is deactivated. To use the alternate flap and slat drive system, set the alternate flaps selector to match the flap lever. Now rotate the selector to up. 
To arm the alternate system for the slats, you push the leading edge switch. When the system is armed, alternate appears on the switch. Both leading edge hydraulic shutoff valves close and the electric motors are armed to provide power to their corresponding power drive units. Now arm the leading edge devices. When the trailing edge switch is pushed, the trailing edge shutoff valve closes and the electric motor is armed to provide power to the power drive unit. Now arm the alternate system for the flaps. To position the slats and flaps, you set the alternate flap selector to the desired position. Now rotate the selector to position 1. This signals the leading edge power drive units to move the slats to the takeoff position. Now rotate the selector to position 20. This signals the trailing edge power drive unit to move the flaps to position 20. Flap load relief protection is not armed during alternate flap operation, so check airspeed before positioning the alternate flaps selector. Our final topics in this lesson are the ICAST flap and slat alert messages and the stall warning system. The flaps warning message combined with the warning and configuration lights and the warning oral indicate that the flaps or slats are not in the correct position for takeoff. This requires immediate action. So move the flap lever to position 5 now. When the trailing edge flap disagree or leading edge slot disagree caution message appears together with the corresponding trailing edge or leading edge light, the flaps or slats are not in or driving toward their commanded position. The affected flaps or slats can no longer be positioned by the hydraulic system. They are positioned by the alternate system. A trailing edge flap disagree also occurs if the flap lever is out of any detent for any extended time. Now move the flap lever to position 20. A trailing edge flap asymmetry caution message appears when one of the flaps does not agree with its symmetrical pair. The trailing edge flap power drive unit automatically depressurizes and the flaps can no longer be positioned hydraulically. A leading edge slat asymmetry caution message appears when the inboard or outboard leading edge slats are not symmetrically extended. The corresponding power drive unit automatically depressurizes and the outboard slats can no longer be moved. Do not arm the alternate slat switch when there is a slat asymmetry condition. Asymmetry protection is not provided during alternate slat operation. The ICAS advisory message flap load relief displays if there is a fault in the flap load relief system. This advisory message indicates that the flaps did not retract to position 20 when the flaps 25 or 30 setting airspeed was exceeded. When this occurs, observe the flap limit speeds for the selected flap position. The stall warning system includes two control column shakers. 
The shaker activates by vibrating the control column when there is an impending stall. The stall warning system operates with the flaps and slats in any configuration. If the flaps are in the retracted position and the angle of attack continues to increase, a control column nudger moves the control column forward. 